Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my April book haul. Strap yourselves in kids, this is going to be a long one. If you saw my um, recent um, like long weekend reading vlog, which I'll link for you guys in the cards if you haven't, but you will know that myself and my brother's girlfriend went on kind of like a secondhand book buying spree. We went to like six or seven different Salvation Army stores like kind of around our like area and I purchased 28 books on that trip. I then in addition to that have my just normal monthly purchases and my library books to get through so let's jump straight in and talk about all of these books. I will start off with the library books as always. I only got three books out from the library this month which I'm really really happy with. My first of those is my Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. As you guys all know, I'm sure, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier is one of my like fave books of all time. I absolutely adore it. I've heard really good things about this one recently from Lauren over at Lauren and the book she read this recently and really, really loved it. And I've also, I know like from her videos that um, Simon from Savage Reads also really um, likes this one of um, Daphne du Maurier's book. So I'm hoping that it's going to be really, really good. And I know that this has a movie adaptation coming out later this year, which stars Rachel Weisz and Sam Claflin. So I'm really excited to read this and then like watch the movie adaptation when it comes out. I don't think it's out, but if it is, I'll watch it. And if not, then I'll wait till it comes out and I'll watch it. Um, so I'm really, really excited to get to this and hopefully maybe I'll love this as much as I loved Rebecca. Next from the library, I have The Fiery Heart by Rochelle Mead. This is the fourth book in the Bloodline series and like the next one that I need to get to. And finally, I was browsing the library, which I shouldn't do, but I was, and I decided to pick up In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. This is like a standalone graphic novel. And all I really know about it is that it's to do with gaming. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if this is going to be up my alley because I'm not like into gaming. Like it's just like not my thing. So I don't know like if I'll get this or like if I'll be able to relate like I don't know but I've heard really good things about it so I did want to kind of step out of my comfort zone and give it a go. So those were the library books now to jump into my kind of general monthly purchases. First off we have a book that I purchased at Target and that is King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard which I then immediately proceeded to like bend the cover of which is really annoying. Um, now I wanted to pick this up from Target because I've purchased the other two books like the first two from Target and these are quite like really tall um, paperback so I wanted to like make sure that my editions were going to match so I did go to Target and buy this. So I have read the first two. I personally enjoy them so I am looking forward to reading this pretty soon probably and um, like continuing on um, with the series. So that was the only book that I purchased kind of separate from my normal like monthly order apart from the secondhand books. Um, so I then have my normal like monthly order as always to Book Depository. Um, so the first book that I have from those is Small Great Things by Jodie Pico. I'm really excited to have this and to read this. Um, I'm a fan of Jodie Pico as you know if you've watched my videos. I've read every single one of her books that's been published except for this one of course. Um, this one is about a African-American like labor and delivery nurse who is like helping with the delivery of a baby but then the parents of the child are white supremacists and they like ask the hospital to like remove this nurse from like helping because she's african-american and they don't want her touching their baby and so she's removed like from helping them or whatever and then one night she's like alone in the like area where the babies are or whatever and this baby of the white supremacist goes into like cardiac arrest or something and she has to like help like save the baby's life or whatever and basically she is then on trial. Um, I don't know if the baby like dies or like what but there's some court case falling on from this that the white supremacists are like suing because she touched the baby and like she wasn't supposed to touch the baby and etc. Um, so yeah I love Jodie Pico so I'm really excited to get to this because this sounds like it deals with some very interesting subject matter. Then from Book Depository I ordered Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. Um, this is the third book in the Cormoran Strike series. This is my favourite one of the series. Um, and so I own the other two in physical. Now I have this one. I will say the first two came in mass market paperback. And then this one is like a normal paperback. That's kind of annoying. I am terrible at looking at the size measurement. I hate that it's like 
got the measurements and it can't just say whether it's a normal paperback or a tall paperback or a mass market paperback. Like I didn't realize that this one was coming in mass market. So I was like a bit annoyed when this came and then I was like, oh, now this one doesn't match. So it's just all gone to shit really. But anyway, and the final book that I ordered from Book Depository on that monthly order was Life and Death by Stephanie Meyer. I have wanted to pick this up for a while. I read Twilight in high school, like most people. No, in high school. I say in high school. That is a straight up lie. I read it after high school. Um, I read it around the time that the Twilight movie was coming out, which I was probably like three years outside of high school. But I did enjoy it when I read it, uh, as most people did, like let's be honest. Um, and I never read this. Um, I know obviously what it's about and I know the twists, like the twist stuff, like I know it all, but I do want to kind of read it and experience it for myself. It hasn't been like high on my priority list, but eventually I do want to get around to this and see what I think of it. I kind of want to reread the whole Twilight series and then read this, but I don't know that I have the time or the inclination to do that, but we'll see. Okay, so now let's jump into the 28 secondhand books that I picked up in the month of April. First off, I picked up Bitter Greens by Kate Forsyth. This is like the first book that I kind of spotted at the first store that we went to and it's a book that I knew was a fairy tale retelling from like way back and that I knew that I'd wanted to read like back in the day. I believe this is a Rapunzel retelling. That's all I know about it. And I saw it and I was like, oh, I've like heard of that book. Um, so I'll pick it up. This one cost me $4. So not too bad at all. I then... So this first store that we went to where I picked up the first four books that I'm going to talk about was like this, I don't mean this in a bad way, but like a crappier, like a little store um, that didn't have like the computer system, like the tills weren't like computerized or any of that. It's not on there like, like the Salvation Armies in Australia, like you could be a member of them and like get points and things. But like this one isn't even like on that system because it's like a really small, like little store. I hit the jackpot at this store. Like, I got that book, which is like, you know, been out for ages or whatever, but the next three books that I have here are all recent releases. So the first one, next book that I spotted, after I spotted Bitter Greens, I was like looking around, and then I saw Her Every Fear by Peter Swanson. This is his like recent release. Like, this came out like at the end of 2016, I believe. Oh no, this says 2017. Like, this came out in 2017. I have read The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. Really enjoyed it. I also own his first book, the Girl with a Clock for a Heart, which I haven't read, but I really want to read. And like I marked this as to read a while ago. I'm very excited to have it. I'm very excited to have spotted a like 2017 release at that Salvation Army store. I then picked up Maestra by L.S. Hilton. To be honest, I don't really know what this is about. I know that it is, again, a really recent release. I believe 2016. 2016, is that correct? Yes, 2016 um, release that I've kind of seen around and like it says on the front here, the most shocking thriller you'll read this year. And again, like all I know about it is that it's a thriller, but I was very excited to see it there and I immediately got my grubby little hands on it. And the next one that I got like from that store was The One Who Got Away by Carolyn Overnighton. This is another 2016 thriller release. This one is about a woman who kind of appears to have like the perfect marriage and all that and then... I think someone hands her a note and it kind of just like blows her whole wide and her like her marriage were um, wide open. It says here, perfect couple, perfect lie. So again, a 2016 release. And as I was just flicking through this before I started filming like about this book, I found a receipt in here from Kmart from the person who purchased this book. It was purchased in May of 2016 and it cost them $16 and I paid three dollars for it so I am pretty happy with that I think each of these books like so far have been cost me three or four dollars so needless to say I was very happy with the first store that we visited um, from the next store I believe I only picked up one book which was Ruined by Amy Tintera I was really excited again to see this there because this is a fairly recent release again maybe 2016 or 20 yeah 2016 and I had marked this as to read when I would kind of first heard about it and it is about like it's a fantasy story about a girl whose parents have been murdered and then her sister is kidnapped and in order to try to get her sister back she poses like infiltrates this like other kingdom by posing as like their prince's like betrothed and like basically she's going to like marry the prince but she wants to like kill them all and like get her sister out and that just really intrigued me at the time so I was really excited to see this there. I think I've seen around that the second book in this um, has recently um, been published so if I enjoy this I'll be able to like continue on 
um, with the series. But again, like a really recent release that I paid, how much was this one? $3.25 for, so you really can't go wrong. Next, I picked up The Widow by Fiona Barton. Again, a fairly recent release. Like, I feel like this is, again, another 2016 it is another 2016 release. Like, I really, this day, was just, like, finding all the great books. This is another thriller novel, if you can't tell I'm really into thrillers. And this one is about, like I said, a loving husband or a heartless killer. She'd know, wouldn't she? So I believe this is about a woman who, you know, believes, like, her husband's, you know, perfect and dandy. And then it, it, he is, like, accused of all these crimes. And I believe this story, like, is after her husband has died and about her and what she thinks about him and knows about him. And so it just sounds really like intriguing, so I'm very excited to pick this one up. Next I picked up What They Knew by Avril Dean, which you guessed it is a 2016 release. This is another, you guessed it, thriller, and this one I'm a little bit like intrigued like just by the synopsis because it says on a bitter January evening three people are found murdered in the isolated Blackbird Hotel. And then, like, in the synopsis, it goes on to talk about these three childhood friends and how they decide to buy this, like, dilapidated hotel and, like, do it up or whatever. And then there's, like, you know, betrayals and jealousies and things like that. And so I presume it's going to be those three who were found um, dead and we're kind of going to lead up to that and, like, what happened, I'm assuming. Um, so that's, like, again, I'm intrigued. Next, I picked up Burning by Danielle Rollins, which I believe, if I recall correctly, is a um, pseudonym for... Danielle Vega, who, like, wrote The Merciless and those books. I own The Merciless, but I haven't read it yet. This one is about a girl who is about to be released from juvie, and then um, another girl comes there, and she's really young, but she's brought in under, like, the highest level of security, and, like, what is it about this girl? I don't know. Like, I'd, I'd heard about this before, and when I saw it, like, I just recognized it, and so I decided to pick it up. And, again, this one was, like, $4, so you really can't go wrong. Next, we have The River at Night by Erica Ferenik. Fer I butchered that. Um, this is, again, a thriller novel. Um, and this is about a woman who has recently gone through um, a divorce, and I think someone in her family has died, and, like, she, you know, she's, like, getting over all these things, and her and a couple of her friends decide to go on this, like, white water, like, rafting trip, and at the end of the synopsis it says, no phone single, no phone signal, no people, no help. This really gives me vibes of that movie, um, with Meryl Streep and Kevin Bacon. Oh my god, what's that movie called? Oh, that's killing me that I can't remember the name of that movie, but I really like that movie, um, and this is really just gives me vibes of that, so, looks like a good time. Next, I found Disclaimer by Renee Knight. This is another thriller. This is about a woman who receives, like, a novel, like, in the mail, and she starts to read it, and it's, like, about her. Um, and it's, like, slowly revealing, like, her deepest, darkest secret, which she thought no one else knew. So that just sounds really interesting. And this was $2, so bargain. Next, I found Nightfall by Jake Halpern and Peter... Kujawinski. Um, this is a book that I've seen kind of going around on booktube a little bit. Um, it's a YA like thriller story about this like island. I think it's an island where um, what's this here? After 14 years of day comes 14 years of night. Don't get left behind. It's like basically like obviously it, there's night for like 14 years and but they all leave like they go somewhere else when it's night like they don't stay on the island like when it's dark for 14 years. And there's these two, like, a brother and a sister, and their friend goes missing right before they're all, like, about to flee the island. And I think they'll go to find him. They might get trapped on the island and, like, find out exactly, like, what goes on because there's, like, all this weird, bizarre, like, stuff. So I was really excited to see this there, like, in a hardcover. Um, like, again, a fairly recent release. So exciting stuff. Next, I found the entire Summer Trilogy by Jenny Hahn. So we have The Summer I Turned Pretty, It's Not Summer Without You, and we will always have summer, like, in these matching, like, white editions. Um, I was really excited to find the entire trilogy there. Um, these were $2 each, so I got the entire trilogy for $6. Um, this is a young adult contemporary um, series about which is set, like, at the summertime, obviously, about a girl who is, like, torn between two brothers, basically. That's all I know about it, but... Again, it was a bargain. Uh, next, I picked up A Dark Dividing by Sarah Rain. Look at this cover. That is creepy. Um, and basically, it's the cover that made me purchase this because, like, as you can tell, this is twins. And from skimming the synopsis, I could tell this was, like, a creepy story. 
about twins and twins is like a massive like buzzword thing for me that I just found twin I generally find twin stories like very interesting so yeah I decided it says two sets of twins born 80 years apart are united by a chilling secret so yeah intriguing stuff Next, I saw a copy of The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is a memoir that I've been wanting to pick up for like a really long time. I believe this is just about a woman's childhood and like um, like her really like kind of impoverished and like difficult upbringing. Um, a lot of people love this. I've heard so many people say that this is their favorite like autobiography, like memoir type thing. So um, I saw this. I know that this is being adapted into a movie this year, I believe, as well. So when I saw a copy there and it was $3, I decided to definitely give that a go so I can read this hopefully before the movie comes out. Next, I picked up My Grandmother Sends Her Regards and Apologies by Frederick Buckman. So I had to look this up because I didn't realize that this had an alternate um, title, but this is My Grandmother Asked You me to tell you she's sorry um, with the slightly different title but this has been um, being spoken about a lot on booktube like recently just Frederick Buckman um, generally um, and when I saw it I was like oh and then I looked up and realized it was the same book and this was two dollars I immediately was going to purchase it. Next I picked up this tiny cute little leather bound edition of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. So at one of the stores we went to they had like a whole heap of these like really tiny little um, leather bound um, really really old um, books and I really wanted to purchase one. They were only five dollars and I picked this one out because it was probably like my favorite of the books that they had. Um, I really love Sense and Sensibility so I just thought it was really nice to get this really like cute old edition. I just thought this would be something really nice to have on my shelf basically. Next I found a hardcover copy of I Remember You by Kathleen Davitt Bell. I marked this as to read and spoke in one of my marked as to read videos a couple of months ago and I believe I heard about this from Michaela um, at Love Michaela E. Um, this is a um, story about a girl and a boy and when like he first lays eyes on this girl he immediately remembers like their first kiss and their first bite and all of these things but they've never actually met and he's not saying that he can see the future but that they've, he's already lived it. Um, but then things slowly start to get more ominous I think and it just sounded really really interesting so when I saw this there and I remembered it like from my marked as to read video I immediately snapped it up. Next I found a hardcover copy of The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey. Um, I think this might be the first book in a series but this is a book that I've just seen like on booktube quite a bit and when I saw a copy there for only three dollars like I like, couldn't leave it there unpurchased. This is an Aladdin retelling, I believe, and it involves a romance between Aladdin and the genie, I believe, and the genie, like it's a genie, like, and it's a girl, so I can't remember if I've heard good or bad things about this, but basically it was a book that I knew, and I was like, oh my god, I have heard of this book, and so I immediately added it to my basket. Next, I found a copy of Between the Lives by Jessica Shervington. I'm not sure if I've heard of this book in particular, but I've heard a lot about Jessica Shervington. She's an Australian author. I don't think I've read anything by her, but um, I've heard good things about quite a few of her books. And this one sounds really interesting. It's a YA story about a girl who shifts every 24 hours and lives each day twice as completely different lives. And in one life, she's like really like popular and like well-to-do. And then in the other life, she is... Um, her family's not as well off and she's like considered to be a rebel and all those kind of things. It just sounded like really quite interesting. Um, and so I, like I said, I'd heard good things about this author. So I decided to give this one a go. Next, I found a copy of Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This is a book that I would be planning to um, purchase eventually because I've recently completed both the Mortal Instruments at Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices series and I did want to read this but I was planning to buy the Shadowhunter Academy like bind up novellas first but then I saw this in one of the secondhand bookshops for only three dollars and so I immediately was just I was really excited because I was like this is just going to save me a lot of money basically. Next I picked up Looking for Alaska by John Green. This is the 10th anniversary edition in this like gold foil and it's got black edged pages which is really cool and I saw this there and I this is a book that I've been playing I need, like need to read this year um, to complete one of my challenges that I'm doing so when I saw it there and it was this really cool edition I decided to buy it um, so that if I love it I have this really cool edition and if not I can always donate it back. Um, so yeah I picked this up I have no idea what this is about like I I'm really not sure, but you hear good and bad things about John Green's books. I have read The Fault in Our Stars, which I really loved, and I've read An Abundance of Catherine's, which I didn't really like, so I'm interested to see how I like some of John Green's other works. Next, I picked up 
How Hard Can Love Be by Holly Bourne. I was really excited to see this there. This is um, a paperback edition, which is in really great condition. Now, this is actually book two in the trilogy, but this is a series that I do want to read and I probably like would have purchased eventually. And so I decided to just purchase this um, second book while I saw it there for really cheap because this was $2.25. So I really couldn't look past it. I love the really bright spines that these have. So I will eventually purchase books one and three so that I can give this trilogy a go. I've heard amazing things about this trilogy. I can't remember exactly what it's about, but I know it's supposed to be, it follows three friends and it's supposed to be like really feminist. I've heard really good things from Michaela, I love Michaela Eve, um, Maddie at B and Maddie and B talk about this series all the time as well. I've just heard really positive things in general. So I'm really excited to have found this in really great condition. Next, I picked up a copy of The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So this was only $3, and so I decided to buy it. I've been contemplating for a long time whether I wanted to read this. I have read The Secret History by Donna Tartt, and I didn't love it. So I didn't know whether I would enjoy this, and because it's so big, I, I just I wasn't sure. I don't even really get what this is about. I think it's about a boy... Um, who is taken in by another family I think maybe when his mom dies but like I don't know anything about it and I know I think that's got to do with art but I don't know how or why or anything but you hear really amazing things about this so and it did win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 2014 so I do want to give this a go eventually but it'll probably be like a long time down the track and then I found a, another really good find, and that was See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. This is yet another 2017 release that I saw for $4. So I was really, really excited. And this is a fictional story that's got to do with Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden, if you don't know, is a very um, like famous case of a um, woman who was supposed to have killed, I believe it's her parents. Um, like, some, there's some rhyme, and it's like with an axe with 40 wax or something she killed them with an axe and this is something to do with that story I'd like seen this around and when I saw it on the shelf I was like oh wow like that's just come out really recently so I immediately snapped it up because it was four dollars next we have The Birthing House by Christopher Ransom now I like saw this and like the name and the cover were just kind of really intriguing and then I read the synopsis and it was the synopsis that totally sold me on this so I'm gonna read that to you guys it says, when Conrad and Joe move to their historic Victorian house, it seems like a new start for them. With its fairy tale porch, wooden floorboards, and perfect garden, it feels as though they have finally come home. But when Conrad is given an old photo album, he begins to discover what dark secrets the house is harboring. Looking through the cracked 100-year-old pages, he finds a photo of a group of Victorian women standing outside his house. The women look scary, angry, all dressed in black with their arms folded. And then his heart nearly stops when he sees that one of the women, raven-haired and staring at him with hatred in her eyes, is his wife. Heck is yes! That just sounds really, really good. And it says on here, the scariest novel since Stephen King's The Shining, the birthing house groups from the first line to the terrifying, terrifying final twist. Like, it just sounded really, really awesome. And it was, how much was this one? $4 again. So I really look forward to reading this. There's just something about this that just like, I'm like, look at this and go, yes, this is going to be good. And now we have the final book in this absolutely gigantic book haul, and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. So again, this is one that basically just saved me some money. I read The Diviners and the second book, um, Lair of Dreams, on audio. And I've been wanting to purchase these Australian editions in physical format for a while. Like they've been on my wish list, and I just hadn't got around to purchasing them yet. And then I saw this one there for four dollars. So this is the cover. Um, I know that the like US like slash UK I think editions have recently had a cover change with the announcement of the title of the third book. I'm not sure what's happening with the Australian cover, so I'm really hoping that they stick with like these covers. I'll put a picture over here of the cover of Lair of Dreams in these Australian editions because I really like these editions. Um, like they've got like I really like the spine. Like it looks really like cool and like old and stuff, and I just feel like it really. Like the aesthetic of it is just like really fits in with the series. So I'm really hoping that they do stick with these covers for the Australian editions, but we'll see. Um, but this is only $4, so I immediately snapped it up because it was always a book I was going to purchase. So to get it for a cheap price is always a good thing. 
So there you have it. That is my absolutely gigantic April book haul. I thank you guys if you have stuck with me through this in what I'm sure is a really, really long video. I apologize. I meant to go through these really, really quickly and then I just got so excited about them that I'm sure I spoke for way too long. So I do apologize. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these and have like any thoughts on any of them. Some of them that I don't know too much about and I've picked up just because it was like cool thriller. I would love to know if you've read them and have thoughts. Any awesome books that you guys picked up in April was your self-control a little better than mine in April? I would love to know that in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.